Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm back with another video. So today's vlog is not going to be very exciting and very happy. Uh, one, uh, there's nothing to be like really sad about. It's just been very, very stressful past week. And I just wanted to sit down and chit chat with you um, a little bit, update you on things that has been going on in our life and stuff like that. So as you guys know, my Caro has dwarfism on top of his autism and ADHD. And uh, with his dwarfism, the same one that I have, he had both legs. Um, for the past few years, I had orthopedic that was um, in Los Angeles area that was monitoring Cairo's uh, basically progress of his both legs. So every year we went ahead and we did x-rays and the orthopedic uh, reviewed it and let us know if there is a progression and what his faults are. So there is a procedure that is less invasive than ours uh, for situations like ours. It's called guided growth surgery. So basically with the guided growth they put two plates uh, around the knees areas on both legs and they basically connect them to the bone with the screws uh, and those um, plates they basically uh, prevent one side of the bone from growing and uh, legs straighten over time naturally it is less invasive than I think it's another procedure called osteotomy. It's when they actually break bones and they cut out like a wedge out of it and they straighten them. But it's very invasive, very painful, long recovery. And also with dwarfism, I heard a lot of times legs might start going the other way and you have to repeat the procedure. So with guided growth surgery, it's much better option if you can take advantage of it if your child is still growing. With dwarfism, uh, growth is much less visible than average size people so we have to do this kind of procedure relatively early so some kids have it done around four or five years of age average size uh, people might have it around teenager uh, uh, age but with dwarfism you have to get it done early that's why we were monitoring his progress of uh, bowing every year and I thought that we still have about a year or two to wait until the surgery needs to be done. This year I switched the orthopedic that's closer to us and um, she, from what I heard, was very good. But she said that we need to hurry up and do it. And she also said that um, she had an appointment like a week and a half from the appointment time. So she said that basically if we want to we can get it done immediately. And if we miss this appointment, then we might have to wait like three months or so till the next one. I didn't want to have this kind of surgery during summertime when kids want to go to water park and play in the water and things like that. So we uh, scheduled this appointment. So we had that surgery done. I was not able to record full vlog. I record some footage on my phone because I wasn't sure. I, I was very overwhelmed and I wasn't sure if I'm even going to make the vlog about it. But I recorded a little bit of footage and I decided to sit down here and kind of incorporate it into this chit chat and just tell you how things were. So first of all, um, a week before this uh, surgery, I actually, we skipped a lot of school for the kids and we tried to do as many activities as we could that we won't be able to do for a while. So I took kids to, you know, theme parks and I took kids to the uh, indoor water park uh, that they loved. Um, and I even tried to take them to the snow, um, but I was not able to because the roads were closed because of all the storms around and stuff like that. So anyway, um, we did a lot of activities and that was so much fun. I had few talks with Cairo um, about the surgeries and what it is and I found like the day before surgery I found the video on YouTube to tell him how things are gonna go like that they're going to put him in a special gown and give him a mask and like different things and uh, as much preparations as I did he was very concerned about being painful I said that they're gonna give him medication but even though he understood and he was not very scared of it I was so emotional. I was crying every time when I was just thinking about it. 
and every little thing was like triggering me to cry even when the teacher was asking how Cairo you know how like if he's ready for it and things like that I was just bawling my eyes out so anyway it was very very stressful and on the day of the surgery um, I recorded a little bit of footage I'll probably incorporate it right here hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today I'm back with another video so today is not 100% happy uh, video I mean it's happy it's just a little bit stressful for me because Cairo is having surgery today I had a meeting with new orthopedic uh, doctor for him and she said that it's better if we do surgery sooner than later as you guys know he has pseudochondroplasia like me and he has both legs so uh, they are planning to put um, like a metal plates in his knees to help them straightening uh, straighten up over time um, it's supposed to be outpatient surgery so hopefully we'll go uh, home today but um, the last 10 days were super stressful for me I was just crying about it so many times but today's the day and we're about to go in about hour and a half so yeah I need all the prayers, all the support I can get today. He was not allowed to eat or drink um, after his dinner yesterday, so he's going to be pretty hungry. I don't know if they're going to give him popsicle. He's really hoping to get a popsicle after the surgery. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for today. And also, I'm planning to set up um, like a blanket and place to lay down in the car in case he doesn't feel like sitting in his car seat. So that is the plan. We're about to leave in about an hour. I'm going to make breakfast for Xavier, for Daddy and me. And then we're going to start heading to the hospital. Okay, so we're here. Daddy's getting the wheelchair that I borrowed from Terry yesterday. Kyra's going to check it out. She said just to pull it, like, yeah, pull it inside. Daddy, that I will see the prize after, after yes, I, I already ordered it. When we come back home, you're gonna get a surprise. Yeah. Your post op surprise. <laughs> Alright, let me get you a blanket. Okay, so we're at the hospital. Got Cairo all checked in, and they're not ready for us yet, so it's gonna be a, a little while. But that's a trip how hospitals look like hotels nowadays because i remember when i was in the hospital it, the hospital looked a little scary so this is a totally different and the music and everything reminds me of a spa or something and there is even a piano in there preston said it's like a player piano what did he say about that it's a piano that uh, that you program to play itself it's pretty cool so, yeah it's pretty cool. so it's actually like live music So I did not record too much of it because um, me and Preston were by his side when Cairo woke up. They actually woke him up for the first time in a operating room to make sure that he wakes up okay. And he was freaking out and things like that. So they had to give him uh, like, you know, relaxing medicine and all this. And that put him back to sleep. And when he woke up for the second time, uh, he was in the recovery room with me and Preston. Um, so after waiting for a little while he woke up and he was he was just freaking out it was like the scariest moment of my life probably so far i um he wanted to take off his um you know bandages and things like that and the doctor said that if he will try they will have to put casts on his legs and as you guys know Cairo has autism so he has very like Sensi some sensory issues. He doesn't like wearing pants. He only likes wearing shorts He doesn't like to have anything around his legs or long sleeves bothering him And here, are, you know, he wakes up with these bandages so with the pain as much as I was explaining him that he will have have some pain But they will give him some medicine When you have a surgery it's different kind of pain from like 
you know, upset stomach and things like that. And I know that Cairo never really had like real pain. And thank goodness he never had broken legs. He never had stuff like that. So it was a different level. Like I was, I'm not, I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna cry at this video. But it was very, very tough for me. And after a few hours, um, they had, they were able to calm him down. We we were able to calm him down, and um, he had really bad pain. They did give him um, quite a bit of drugs to like um, ease his pain, things like that. So after a few hours. Um, I actually thought it was the outpatient surgery. It's supposed to be moderate pain. It didn't look like that at all. Um, after a little while, he wanted to go for a ride on his new wheelchair around the hospital. And after that, he kind of felt a little better. Especially with all the drugs that were, you know, sedating him, like his pain and stuff. But I still, I was concerned about his pain levels. They did give me Norco, which is a strong painkiller. Um, and I was supposed to give it to him every six hours if needed. And, you know, in addition of ibuprofen, it should work. I was really worried if we should go home that night. I thought that maybe we should stay at least one night, but Kara didn't want to. So we took him home. Um, I actually laid him in the back of the car, which is not the safest, I know, but... In a situation like this with you know legs and pain and we live about an hour and a half away from that hospital with the traffic so I feel like it was a good decision I was laying down with him in the back of the van so that worked out the best the first night was like it was intense experience me and Preston Preston took the day off the next day so we were taking shifts so he spent uh, he stayed with him for three hours uh, you know, moving his legs and putting the pillows under and things like that. And then <clears throat> the next three hours I did that and just stuff like that. It was, it was intense. Um, the second night was a little better, but was still, and it was just me because Preston went to work the following day. So it was just very emotional few days. Today is the third day and it's getting a little bit better day by day. Or today I think it's actually a fourth day already. You feeling better? Mm. I saw you stood up today. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're so cute. <laughs> you excited to meet your teacher today? Your new teacher will come over later. So this is how it's going. I told Cairo that he can stay home for about a month. And thank goodness our school district was able to provide home and hospital teacher, which means they give us, I believe, like 17 hours for a month. So the teacher will be coming uh, to work with Cairo five days a week for about an hour. So he wouldn't have to go to school because that was my, one of the major perks I promised him when, you know, I told him about the surgery. I was like, well, you won't have to go to school. And he's not a big fan of school. So I think it, it, it should be fine because even though... He is, thank goodness, starting to walk now. He was actually started to walk on the second day after his surgery, which is great. Like, after the surgery, you have to be encouraged to stand up and move around. And the faster you do it, the faster your recovery will go. Um, but I know my friend Tara, a uh, son with the same diagnosis, he didn't walk for six weeks. Um, so I, I didn't know how that's going to go. So I'm happy that he's able to stand up and put weight on his body and things like that so even even though I'm sure he will recover and start walking relatively soon I hope um, I still want him to stay home because I want to be you know he's in a wheelchair to take him to restroom and uh, things like that to make sure that everything is clean we have a um, follow-up appointment in about three weeks that's when we're gonna go see the doctor the stitches should dissolve on their own um, so yeah, that is pretty much the update. I don't know if you guys are interested in this kind of content and I'm not really making it to be interesting, you know, right now. I feel like I'm making it just to be authentic. I kind of feel like my channel is all about people that um, 
basically want to see and hear what's going on in my life and right now my life is pretty much wrapped around this kind of event so I'm just sharing it with you I am um, you know more than welcome leave your comments down below I love reading them and thank you so much for all your support I really really appreciate it um, so yeah this is how things have been going on lately so I'm trying to navigate between the surgery and trying to figure out how to um, you know educate my child that has so many different diagnoses and things like that so yeah thank you for staying tuned throughout this whole video i appreciate you being here and being part of my channel and until the next time i'll see you guys soon